Hello guys, I'm Dr. Sajad Pathan and today we shall be looking at SBA for the final exams, certain tips and we'll also look at some questions related to pediatrics. All of you must have gone through the FRCM SBA regulations and seen how the FRCM final SBA will be marked. The spe specialty learning outcome one, which is the stable patients will be 35 marks and those which are unstable, in short, dealing with uh, ACLS or uh, any airway breathing circulatory problem, they will be asking about, uh, they, they'll be asking 40 marks for that. SLO4 will deal with your ATLS and trauma. SLO5 will be pediatrics. SLO6 will be procedures and 13 questions are there. SLO7 is challenging situations. 10 questions are there. SLO8 and 12, management and leadership, they will be asking seven questions related to that. And critical appraisal research and quip will be 10 questions. Those who have done their critical appraisal exam, it might be easier for them but uh, let us see if you look at this closely what you see is trauma the atls has a big bulk of mark the pediatrics so if i open uh, the book by clara oliver and ashish banerji i would say about 100 pages of this book is trauma and 100 is pediatrics that means out of 700 just 200 pages will fetch you 65 marks and uh, 10 marks the challenging situation is the legal procedures given in this book the last chapter 10 pages i think so i would emphasize on reading these three very well and remaining you will be able to answer today in this video we'll see some pediatric questions then in the coming videos i will be talking about slo 8 and 12 and slo 10 and 11. so uh, again if you look closely to the pie chart the trauma is a big bulk and uh, pediatrics is another one so which will take almost 50 percent of or i would say 35 to 36 percent of the exam in the pediatric section they are gonna the syllabus is given as dermat ent gastro infectious musculoskeletal neonatal brew brew is something which you should know about and sudic i would emphasize learning about brew and sudic Sudic is sudden unexpected death in children and if you just google Sudic NHS there will be guidelines given for it or Sudic Arkem you will find something related to it. It's basically when there is a sudden unexpected death in a pediatric it is investigated in a different way. It involves a pediatric consultant, police, safeguarding and uh, everybody comes together tries to gather more information from the parents about the circumstances of death it goes over the records of the patient if they had previous admissions then the pediatric consultant will take uh, blood samples blood cultures skin scra scrapings lumbar puncture sample all that thing is taken and then a thorough investigation happens into this all this while the family is supported so without wasting further time let us look at single best answer question number one I will give you 10 seconds to read this and then what we'll do is uh, you can either pause it or uh, think think about the answer and then we will go on discussing it okay let us look at the question now it says, what is the most likely pathogen causing this presentation? Para-influenza, H-influenza, mycoplasma, uh, rhino, RSV. Nine-month-old female is in the ED with fever, shortness of breath, and difficulty feeding. Parents report runny nose for last two days on examination, working hard to breathe, and has scattered crackles and wheeze on auscultation. 37.8 is the temperature, 93% is the saturation, and she is breathing at 30 breaths per minute. So... The scenario seems to be that of a bronchiolitis. So what is the number one causative agent of bronchiolitis? If you guessed it right, it is respiratory syncytial virus that causes bronchiolitis. Uh, Para-influenza can also cause it, but number one organism is respiratory syncytial virus. Let's move on to question number two. 
which of the following is seen in this diagnosis? Hypertrophied muscle on ultrasound, distended loop of rectum, coffee bean sign on x-ray, current jelly stools on rectal exam, target sign on an ultrasound. Six week old infant with projectile vomiting over two days. They report vomiting occurring after feeds and becoming increasingly forceful. The vomit is non-bilious and non-bloody in nature. Vitals are stable with mild tachycardia. Appears irritable with sunken fontanelle. On inspection, there is visible peristalsis and palpation reveals olive size mass in the epigastrium. So, pause the video here, think about the answer and then we shall discuss the answer. So in this scenario, it's very, very clear that it's written in the scenario that this child has hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So what do you see? Hypertrophic muscle on the ultrasound. Think about when do you see distended loop of rectum? You will be able to see distended loop of rectum in Hirschsprung disease. Yes. Or in a latresia. Coffee bean sign on an x-ray is seen in volvulus right current jelly stools on rectal exam and target sign is seen in intersusception let's look at question number three now so here's a photo of a child with uh, some skin coming out it's a three-year-old child let's look at the question what is not associated with this diagnosis okay so you can pause the video again and then we will look at the answers. So in this scenario, the way it has been described is of a staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. So staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, the differential is toxic epidermal necrolysis. But the name itself says toxic epidermal necrolysis in which the whole full thickness of epidermis is gone. But in staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, partial thickness of epidermis is involved. So, and the management is conservative, flucloxacillin is advised, the fluid in the blusters will not grow any microorganism because the staph has already formed a preformed exotoxin which is causing this reaction. So blister fluid will not grow anything. So all the four options, two, three, four, five are correct for staphylococcal scalded syn syndrome but the question said what is not associated that is option number one is the choice over here let us look at question number four you can pause again and we will look at the answer so this scenario classically describes about a 14 year old boy coming with fatigue and mild fever sore throat lymph nodes are there and splenomegaly is there so the diagnosis over here is infectious mononucleosis right caused by Epstein-Barr virus there is no need to do any blood tests but if you do a FBC it will show atypical lymphocytes in a differential they are at slight risk of lymphomas but you do not have to investigate for lymphomas you do not have to do any routine blood test you don't have to give any antibiotics you, the confirmatory test is the wheel felix uh, i think it's called as monospot test it's a heterophil antigen test that's a sheep antigen is used but you don't have to confirm it you do not have to do a two-week referral to hematology team you have to reassure the patient conservative treatment and advice not to participate in any contact sports for two weeks because there is tendency of splenic rupture okay so again you can pause and then we will discuss the answer so the scenario describes a 14 year old girl who has this rash and uh, some joint pains so she was to Lake District about four days ago. So what is the answer here? The diagnosis is Lyme disease. Lyme disease is called by, caused by Borrelia burgdorferi and it's a tick-borne disease. If you can name some other tick-borne disease, Rickettsia, Typhus, 
anaplasma, babesiosis. Yeah, remember these four. Erythema. Erythema means redness. Erythem the answer over here is erythema migrans. Yeah, not marginatum. It is migrans because today the rash is up to the whatever diameter it is. Tomorrow, it, the outer edge will further migrate out. So the answer is erythema migrans. You treat it by giving coamoxiclav or doxycycline. If there is a tick seen, you need to remove it uh, with uh, tweezers. The long-term effects are sometimes Lyme disease can give rise to bilateral Bell's palsy or complete heart blocks. You need to think about them. Erythema nodosum means redness with nodes. It is seen in many conditions like pregnancy, patient on oral contraceptive pills. Let us think of some granulomatous diseases. What are the granulomas you see? TB. So nodosum can come in TB. Sarcoidosis, yes. Inflammatory bowel diseases, that's a granulomatous condition, so you will see them. And you can also see it in systemic fungus infections such as histoplasmosis, blastomycosis. Erythema marginatum. So the margin are everted. This is seen in rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic heart disease caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, which is strep pyogenes, can give rise to impetigo and sore throat pharyngitis and uh, as a consequence you can get rheumatic heart disease or glomerular nephritis you treat it with penicillin v or benzathine penicillin ecthyma gangrenosum is seen with the inflammatory bowel disease uh, erythema multiforme yes from the name redness and in multiple forms so the circles are of different sh shapes and uh, not shapes sizes uh, most common site is the palm and the sole and you will see these erythema multiforme there are many causes the number one viral cause infectious causes of hsv herpes simplex virus then the other causes are syphilis tb hiv uh, drugs paracetamol penicillin, phenytoin, ACE inhibitors, and lymphomas and leukemias. These are the causes of erythema multiforme. When erythema multiforme involves mucous membranes such as oral mucosa or conjunctiva, it becomes erythema multiforme major. And when it involves less than 10% of body surface area, about 10%, it is called as Steven Johnson syndrome. And more than 30% body surface area is toxic epidermal necrolysis. Let us look at question number six. What symptom is likely seen during the course of illness? Weeping eyes with pus, erythematous morbiliform exanthem after the fever phase, papules erupting in different stages, desquamating rash on mucosal surface, neurological deficits in the future. So you have a two-year-old child who's come with 40.5 degrees Celsius and fussiness while in the ED he has a simple febrile seizure. Venous blood gas and blood workup is normal and the child is discharged after 24 hours of observation. So this case describes about febrile seizures. What is the number one cause of febrile seizures? It is HHV6, human herpes virus 6. It is uh, also known as exanthem subitum. So you get erythematous morbiliform exanthem after the fever is gone. Same way, just like you see coplic spots and after the coplic spot, next day is your uh, rash on the body in measles. Uh, let us look at uh, papules erupting in different stages. What condition is that? That's chicken pox. Desquamating rash on mucosal surfaces, either toxic epidermal necrolysis, staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome, Kawasaki disease, or scarlet fever. Neurological deficits in the future, this is measles. It can lead to SSPE, subacute spongiform encephalopathy in the future. Let us look at SBA7.
what is the pathophysiology of the usual complication of this condition so four year old child with fever for last seven days despite medications from gp on examination you notice red conjunctiva with a polymorphous rash on trunk and crackling lips the neck glands are enlarged a diagnosis of mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome is made so this is kawasaki disease and what you'll do is what 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 is the complication which happens you get vasculitis you get uh, kawasaki disease can come with uh, you get uh, aneurysms in the coronaries so therefore you use aspirin for them high dose aspirin and ibig so it, any vasculitis is type 3 hypersensitivity so it is immune complex mediated ige hypersensitivity is type 1 asthma anaphylaxis type 2 is your abo incompatibility cytotoxic reaction type 4 is delayed hypersensitivity your man to test so here the answer is immune complex mediated this is the last question in the pediatric section what is the cause of this rash so seven year old boy is there with red spots on the face since he woke up he looks well otherwise there is no past medical illness and the rash is localized on the face above the neck he had three episodes of vomiting and one episode of diarrhea secondary to food poisoning so what could be the cause of this rash so here the answer is gi symptoms the rash is just on the face above the neck so this person had vomiting forceful vomiting can give rise to such uh, rupture of tiny capillaries which are in the skin and yeah, he's looking otherwise well so gi symptoms is the answer it's not itp it's not leukemia it's not HSP. HSP rash is on the buttocks and at the back. He's looking well, so it's not meningococcemia. The, when you warm it against a closed glottis, the pressure causes rupture of these blood vessels on the skin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy, please do hit that like button and share it with your colleagues. All the best for your exams. I'll see you soon with my next video. Thank you.